，听到，好，好，好谢谢，谢谢，让我们欢迎我们今天晚的主持人 Lucy and Sally。在美家以及各地的朋友们，大家好，我是徐本怡。现在亚洲已是中秋节的早晨，在这个月圆人团圆的佳节里，我首先要祝福各地的华人朋友们阖家平安、幸福美满。山尼老师大约在几个小时前才从台湾飞回到达拉斯机场，返美之前。他人心心念念地为大家策划安排今天这场讲座，并为我们邀请到主讲嘉宾林以凡教授，因此特别要在这里感谢山尼老师。林教授是台湾大学电机系的高材生，美国印第安纳普渡大学电机电脑博士，现任台大机械系专案助理教授。感谢教授在忙碌的行程中受邀参加。特别还在中秋节赶早起床来上我们的节目，谢谢您。因为全场只有九十分钟，林教授今天将会和我们分享他那份炫耀、呃耀眼与精彩的学经历当中的一部分。留美期间，除了专攻学术，他更是主动去参与美国学生们的生活形态与体验。连一般本地的大学生都不见得会这么积极投身于如此多样化的校园生活。相信不仅是学生，还有职场上的年轻人、家长们，甚至连像我这样要为下半场人生做规划的人，都很想来向他学习，听听他是怎么做到这些事的。接下来，我来简短介绍一下节目的程序。今天林教授将会以英语为我们进行演说，在段落中间，来宾们可以提问，中文、英文都可以。提问的方式是在聊天室 chat room 里打字，或是用屏幕下方的 reaction 功能键举手发问。演讲结束后会进入正式的问答环节，机会难得，鼓励大家待会儿尽量的发问。好的，时间宝贵。现在，请各位以最热烈的电子掌声欢迎林以凡教授。有请林教授。Hello, everyone. Well, good evening for the people in Dallas or in the U.S., and also good morning for the people in Taiwan. I'm so honored today to give a talk, sharing my experience in the U.S. when I started there. So today. I will talk about some extracurricular activities and what I have done in the U.S., like the volunteer service,、uh, join the business plan competition, and also join the honor society or fraternity. And also, actually, in the U.S., we can still study abroad. So I will talk about some fun trip and stories in Spain. And also, I joined the wind ensemble. And also their marching band. So finally, I will also talk about some homecoming things and some fun festivals and some activities in the U.S. And hopefully, those stories can inspire you. And for those for those who are planning to apply for the study in the U.S., this is the guideline. <clears throat> so first. Let's get the ball rolling from the volunteer service. Actually, when I got the admission letter from Purdue University and decided to attend Purdue for pursuing my PhD degree, my friends and most of my teachers told me it would be boring and not much entertainment there. You will see lots of coins in the suburb. Is that true? Did I really have a boring and tedious life at Purdue? One day, I saw the announcement from the ISS, International Students and Scholars. They need volunteers to play bingo with senior citizens in the nursing home. I felt interested because I love playing bingo games, especially when you have only one number left. And the number caller just calls your name. 
your number, and you scream and shout, "Bingo!" I enjoyed that moment. Therefore, I registered right away. When the bingo day came, I was excited. All the volunteers came to the nursing home, and after the small talk, all the people started to play the bingo game. Our task was to help them play the game. I was sitting with one of the senior citizens. She looked nice in the beginning, and we had some icebreak talks. Each of us has our own bingo card. We did not win the first couple games. Then I was cased, and the caller just called my number. So I shouted "bingo," and was really happy that I made it. I went to the front the front table and picked up the prize after the bingo card was checked validly. When I was trying to give the gift to my partner, she was angry. She was really furious and kept mumbling, "Why do you snatch my gift? Why can't you play the bingo game? You shouldn't play the game." Apparently, she did not know why I was there, and it was not a pleasant surprise. I was really frustrated and frightened. She did not want to listen to my explanation. The game was still going on, and. Unfortunately, I found I bingoed again, but I didn't call out that time. Just let the game keep going. I did not have the mood to play the game, and she did not want to. She did not want me to help her watch the number. I felt I did something wrong and embarrassed. I wanted to leave away, and at that moment. It was really a terrible volunteer service experience for me for the first time, and it kept me down for several days. It was a really terrible volunteer service experience, and I never did any service at Purdue in the following couple of years. But right now, you may think that I gave up. Doing volunteer service is not fun, wasting time. It is really boring living in the West Latvia, but you never know. On Thanksgiving Day in 2012, I attended a free lunch at the church. I saw the Purdue students serving and wanted to get involved. I was told to apply for Purdue's Bold Out Volunteer Program. Since being accepted in Bold Out in 2013, I've had so many opportunities. To give back to the community, and I found that I enjoyed every service, even when it is challenging. Whether it is a tree planted or a meal served, if hard work puts a smile on someone's face, then it's all worth it. We will see some slides and pictures later on. As I say that, I talk about the Bold Out Volunteer Program. This program was found in fall 2009, and it is a cohort-based program organized by the Purdue Office and International Program that provides international and American students with meaningful community service projects in the Greater Latvia. The participants do a variety of volunteer work alongside other Purdue students and local community members. The objectives of the Boil Out are to expose international students to the local community, to give back to the community, to improve students' intellectual knowledge and effectiveness, and to learn the new practical skills. Help students meet new friends from all over the world. The program reflects the three core values: like out, O stands for outreach. U stands for understanding, and T stands for teamwork. For outreach, it provides volunteers the opportunity to give back to the community that received them with open arms, as well as with humbling experiences of serving disadvantaged individuals 
and animals. For understanding, it allows volunteers to foster continuous understanding of American and other cultures as they work closely in groups during various events. For teamwork, it helps volunteers to improve their leadership and networking skills by learning the values of teamwork among cohort and community partners. Since being accepted in Boiled Out in 2013, I've had so many opportunities to give back to the community and also learn something. For example, I cooked and served meals to the homeless people in the Lafayette Transitional Housing Center. I learned to cook American and Mexican food and food for which American people prefer for the dinner. Can you I tell us what you can cook, American food or Mexican food? Ah, yeah, yeah, I will talk about that. Uh, so when I finish these stories right away, and we, you can see some pictures, and it'll okay. be fun. And I learned to, I participate in winterization or springification. That's the new term. And boil the blast many times. That means that I help seniors clean their backyards and also clean their front yards and something else. I also volunteered in Boulder tailgate team recycling in each fall, interacting with football, football fans and also handing out recycling bags at the entrance to tailgate parking area. In the Lafayette Treat Farm and Treat Pruning Project, I helped with pruning trees and clearing out small brush so that our city is green and beautiful. In the Food Finder mobile pantry program, I sorted the food and then distributed it to Indiana residents with qualifying low incomes. In the Nano Days program, I interacted with K-12 educators and students by engaging them in hands-on activities, demonstrations, and supporting the Science Cafe lectures. In the Martin Luther King Day of Service, My screen is frozen. It's only me. Now it's frozen. Maybe it's a uh, Ivan's uh, computer. I believe so. Well, his screen is frozen. It looks like. I think it's you. Will, he will jump back. <laughs> So maybe you should tell him. I don't know if he can hear you. Okay, now I, he's moving. Ivan, turn on your microphone. Hey, I muted. What, how come? So can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Oh, that's weird. Okay, so you can see that I love ushering in different, many con different concerts. So you can give the tickets and the programs to the audiences and also guide them to their seat. Uh, and it'll be fun. Is, Professor Lin, I think we lost your shared screen for those PPT. Oh, uh, here. Thank you, it's back. Oh, that's wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay, so, so now you can see those pictures. Uh, as I said that, um, I can give the audience the tickets or the programs and guide them to the, their seats. Just have a small interaction. And this is called the Polar Plunge. It's a fundraising event. So people will dress up and jump to the pool. But in this event, we will sell some cookies and give them the food. So in that case, you will also distribute all the food and know how to say all the drinks names to the audiences. And for the, for every, actually every April, it's called like a tree day or arbor day. 
So you already move the tree or trans transplant the trees. And you know that how to dig the hole first, and then finally move all the trees to what you have. And this is also fun. And sometimes because in April, it rains a lot. So sometimes we have a pouring rain, but we still have to do this. And also acting, uh, interacting with other students and the local people are really, really fun. Mm -hmm. Here is some, and during the Christmas, you will wrap up the gifts and it will send those gifts to the children. So I know how to packing and I will make some like a bow tie. And this one is like a jazz competition. So I was the host introducing each team. And in that case, that will be very, very formal. And I was very nervous, but uh, finally it turns out good. And you will also go to the, I will go to the fi food finders and food banks. Sometimes you distribute the food or you pack the different cereals because those are donated from someone else. And later on, they will distribute to the homeless people or some someone else that their income is low. So in that case, you know like how to pack. And also during that time, you can just communicate with uh, the partners or their coordinators to know more about their organization. And here is also another fun part that we cooked for the homeless people. As you can see that we have some salaries and this is the fun part because when we prepare for the salaries and finally people didn't like it. And we realized that the seniors really don't like the celery because it's hard to chew. So later on, if you want to prepare food for the seniors, probably just avoid celery. <laughs> <laughs> and also actually uh, when, when I was there, another native speaker uh, who was the coordinator in our program and she was around 60 also. She even didn't know that. And once we prepared that and we all learned, okay, salary is not a good choice. <laughs> And also sometimes we will go to the, the school, playing socializing with the, their uh, students. Sometimes they do some art night in the evening. So they will use some dots or, or painting that we try to make some good shapes or, or photos. And also for the Easter, Easter day, uh, we have to set up the eggs and also it's, it's a carnival. So sometimes we have to be the carnival gamekeeper and also guide the, the, ch the children to different games. Mm -hmm. And here's another kind of bingo games is in American mental health location. And we will play bingo games. And it was my first time being the host, like a number caller. And it was fun because as a number caller, I can do what, whatever I want. For example, like, okay, this time we can do like a just straight line or next time we do bingo for diamond or any shapes. And also you need to call the numbers. So it's another practice to, to, to say those numbers. And here is, as I said, this is like a recycling team. So just right before the home game, we try to help those fans to do a good recycling. So we gave them the recycling bags and also tell them uh, what to do. And also we remind them do more recycling. And they gave me uh, three or four sentences. Now I forgot, but those three or four sentences, I have to say it in three seconds because it was really, really fast. We have so many cars, so we couldn't waste any time. So at that time I could speak really, really fast and it was fun. And also in fall, we sometimes we try to deliver the pumpkins to, to the pantry. So this is like the, the, the picture. And you will see, we have a 
we have a thin line to pass the, the pumpkins. And this one is also another fun activity. It's called St. Valentine. So during the Valentine's Day, we went to the senior house and we sing some love songs to those seniors. And also that means that we learn some uh, love songs. And also sometimes I just went to the uh, senior nursing home playing the piano with them so they can enjoy the piano. So as I know that, as you know that I probably are not good at playing bingo games with them, then probably I just play the piano and they really enjoy it a lot. And we also have like a food bazaar. So in the food bazaar, I'm just in the cash table. So I just collect the cash and give them the tickets. And during that time, we can also have a small talk to the participants. And those are just another school's activities. So actually, because I love carnival games. So being the carnival games keeper will be also another good experience. And during that time, I can also practice how to win those games. And this one is uh, the setup for the Feast of Hunter's Moon. The Feast of the Hunter's Moon is a really big event in West Lafayette. And we need to build up or create the, their booth. So I know that how to tie those two woods in uh, firm, uh, firm ropes, and they have different types of tiding. And also this one is the taste of Tabi Canoe. So actually in, I think in every city, almost every city, they have a taste of something like a taste of Chicago, a taste of Tabi Canoe. Then they will have a lot of restaurants to give you some sample bites mm -hmm. and you can use just one buck or two or three bucks to have their food. So I was in the entrance door giving the, giving the agenda and also collect the tickets. And this one is a, is a fundraising event. It's called Light the Night Walk. It's a fundraising for, for, it's a cancer society. So during that night, people will walk and also, whoops. And also we will give them different colors of the balloons. Different colors represents different people. And after that, we were walked with those participants around. And uh, for the for for the hunger hike, it's just like a running, uh, not competition, but it's just like a five k run or like a two k run. So I will guide them where should they go. For the Halloween, there's an event called the boot at the zoo, which means that you need to dress up. At the, at the zoo and those children will come here to play some games or even that this is the first time I was there. You can see that 2013. So we had no experience. And then we finally are assigned to the games uh, place. So we were the gamekeeper. But at that time I knew that there was another section. Uh, people can dress up and act the story when people, when the children took the train pass, passing by. So the next year, when they say that who wants to do this uh, story acting, then I just raise my hand immediately because I really want to dress up like a poker in the Alice Wonderland. Yeah, so you home. really like Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Where you go get a, those giant poker cards? They will provide it to you. So because the, the previous year, I knew that, oh, okay, there's a story like that. And I really want to have this dress. Uh -huh. So the next year, when they say, Alice, Wonder, uh, Alice in Wonderwood, and I just raised my hand immediately. <laughs> <I'm pink. laughs> so, so I just choose the poker right away. And so uh, the, children will took, uh, the children took the train and they will pass, pass around each time. Then we just add the excerpt. Next time you maybe carry a, a small house on your head, like Alice <laughs> shrink and giant. Yeah, and now my my comp.
Oh, did I cause you frozen again? So it sounds like the um, association prepare kind of every single thing for them and the volunteers just kind of uh, volunteer to one part of the event. Yeah, so I, kind of I like the tree plant thing. I think maybe Bon Bon, uh, since I come back, maybe we can do some April planting idea for Bon Bon friend. Yeah. Maybe someone can host in Taiwan. Someone can host in <laughs> Malaysia. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Ivan was out. She will jump back soon. I was so surprised he volunteered in so many events. Actually, I think that's a difference about American and uh, Asian culture. I like American, like a church have a lot of volunteer. So when people getting old, they do a lot of volunteer instead of complain their, you know, sister-in-law, mother-in-law at the home. They don't have the time to complain anymore. <laughs> I believe it's kind of American people, they grow up with the volunteer system. Like the kids um, in high school and all from the middle school, they start to encourage the kids to volunteer. Like we are Brian here that you you may be the perfect person to kind of explain to us because um, it's different uh, environment to grow up for the kids to grow up. So Do you remember kind of your first way. volunteer, Sally? Huh? Oh, Do you why. remember your first volunteer in your life? Who, me? No, Sally, I asked Sally. Oh, oh. oh. I oh, think, how about you, Brian, if you want to stop? Yeah, let Brian say something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm not really a big volunteer person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I don't know about Taiwan. I don't know how that is in your culture. Yeah. Uh, but we do have a lot of volunteerism uh from different groups usually it's a group of people so uh i'm just worried about when i get older now uh i i won't be able to eat celery <laughs> <laughs> okay Ivan, Ivan is i'm back, back but yeah, to I my yeah That's okay. uh, let me see if i can why are you waiting share... you share screen i want to hear what's the sally's uh uh, first yeah. volunteer in her life. <laughs> I'm not really um, remember which one is my first one because um, although I was not born in USA, but my family kind of encouraged us to help other people. So it's become a lot of chances for my family members to help uh, like, no matter it's from the village part or go to the city part or go to school. So, um, I, I still remember when I was um, like in fourth grade, uh, our school system is very funny way, our elementary school, like they are using the uh, upgrade labels students to help the younger kids. So I got that uh, opportunity to help kids to uh, kind of teach them uh, math. So maybe that's become why I'm a teacher right now. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a wonderful uh, experiences that just kind of devote our time to help other people. It's not because we are so wonderful, it's because some people really need help. So that's wonderful. Yvonne, you come back? Oh, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I don't know what happened today that uh, the internet here is very, very slow and weak. That's weird. So I'm sorry about that. And can you hear me clearly? Yeah, don't yes. worry much. When okay, you so now don't let's continue. When you're away, we have a small talk here. So, oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. So, here you can see the whoops, the tree farm and tree planting. That actually was my first time trim the tree on the street. And you can see that sometimes we need to cut off the branch. So, after that work, 
I got the sore arm and sore shoulder for the whole day. Not just whole day, the two, for probably for two or three days, because I need to hold this position for like a two or three hours. And um, this one is also like a carnival, like an Easter egg hunt carnival, because at, um, as you can see that during that event, we cook the food and sell those food to the participants. And during the winter break, part of my winter breaks, I participated in the NRN volunteering. NRN is National Relief, uh, and another N I forgot. So we went to Lisburg and Florida. So during a week, we helped two to three families to clean their backyard and paint their house and also met a lot of students. And actually those meeting, we, uh, Purdue had a team and also OSU also had another team. So we uh, meet together and try to help those families, which was really fun. This is what I said, like a springification or winterization, which means that after the spring or just after fall, you can see so many leaves there and we try to help them, try to help those senior families to clean their leaves. And in the beginning, like you can see that in the beginning, it was all uh, leaves there. And finally, it was much clean. And uh, once I see that much cleaner, I just feel that, wow, uh, all the pressures were relieved. I don't know why. And those are also uh, an, a food bazaar then we Ivan has kind of volunteered so many uh, uh, events I really have a question for him that we have uh, did he got first. the chances oh you come back good I just wonder Ivan you you volunteer so many events. Did you how can you find the chances to volunteer? Is that from your school or university? Yeah, or? From, yeah, yeah. So uh, I just, I said I joined the uh, I joined the program called the volunteer uh boiler out volunteer program, uh, held it by the Purdue International Students and Scholars, and they provided so many events that you can register for. So once you registered, then they will send you to the to the place, and then later on they will send you back to the campus. Great. And later on, since I went to so many uh, events, then I knew the coordinators in those events or society, and later on uh, I can contact them directly uh, if they need it. Oh, so those are the. Uh, the fun activities and volunteer services experiences in the U.S. Actually, there will be there are more pictures than I can provide here due to the time limited. So that is the story. And the next story I would like to share is called the Rice Business Plan Competition. But uh, any question? Any questions for the service, or we can leave the questions. Till the end of the speech. Well, Ivan. Uh, yes. I'm wondering, uh, can you share share your motivation to be a like such a positive volunteer? Uh, it's your nature, like your your personality or your your life experience. Yeah. Yeah, actually, the fun fact was that I don't know because when I was in Taiwan before I go to the oh, I went to the U.S. I didn't I think I didn't do any volunteer service and I didn't know the volunteer service opportunities in Taiwan. But when I was there, and since a lot of people say that the project was so boring, there uh, you, you can only see the corns and not many activities. So I just feel that I should attend some fun events. And also, I really want to talk to the native speakers to practice my English. 
And also talking to them, I can learn their culture, not just even the US, but you probably can learn um, people from the Indian or from the Europe. So that's why I, I wanted to join those activities. And I didn't know that uh, once I joined these activities, I love it so much. I can really release my pressure, especially if I couldn't find any improvement in my research. So I just participated in almost all the events. Okay. You know, actually, it looks like I was addicted to do the volunteering. Yeah, so you made a lot of friends from uh, the worldwide. Yes. Cool. Yes. And, but the sad thing was that when I came back to Taiwan, or maybe I don't know why that I was so busy and I couldn't find any activities, uh, the volunteer service, or even I found one, but uh, I really don't have time to participate in. So, so maybe if you know some fun things that I can participate, maybe I will try. Yeah, yeah, I saw the I saw the balloon on your on your foot. I I, oh, I suddenly uh, think about the audience. See, have a uh uh one author I really admire, Warren Tai. Uh, he recently wrote a a short blog about uh, like a nude little tiny foot. The time of doing the uh Guangzhou Ya the Sui <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. I will share in the bonbon. Everybody go read. It's teeny tiny foot. I like the balloon. <laughs> uh, hi, Professor Ling. One, hi. Uh, one in our audience, I had a question. Uh, oh. do, do we, do yeah, we need... everybody, if you have any time you don't understand or you have a question or you want to know more, uh, we like to interrupt Ivan anytime. Give a, him a challenge. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think she was asking, uh, do you need to pay for out of uh, pay for the traveling for the trip out of your pocket when you uh, are, are volunteering? Yeah. Oh, in the in, at Elizabeth, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. For this one, uh, for this one because it's two thousand thirteen, almost. I, I also, like a road trip. I also, you make so, me think about uh, one Chinese ancient time uh, confusion say, uh, uh, just like uh, when I was young, uh, better do a lot of small things. That's how make we strong. And I was so surprised, so many volunteer. You know, what, what actually, what I learned from Toastmaster volunteer is uh, leadership from service. And I think you grow up from your volunteer a lot. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So actually, when you do the volunteers, it's I will think I think it's just like another kind of meditation because you may think about something else and doing the work and maybe find out uh, a new perspective. So, yeah. Oh, and also this one, um, I think the uh, school paid all the trips for us. Or so maybe I, we just need to pay like a hundred bucks for the deposit. And yeah, and you can see those are the host, the, the family. And we help them to clean their yards and also the interiors. And this one, oh, uh, this one is here, like a, uh, a room. Actually the house in the beginning was all white and we tried to paint all blue there. And finally it was done and they were so happy. I admire your volunteerism. And I know that you. when you volunteer to do things and help other people, that you get a lot of satisfaction yourself. Correct. You self reward for doing that. So I know a lot of people, they, they always say that when they are helping other people, it's 
not only helps other people, but it's good for yourself too. Yes. And also I've learned some skills like, uh-huh. uh, like how to tie, how to make a bow tie uh, for, uh, for the decoration uh, for their gifts when you wrap uh-huh. up the, 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 the box. And also like how to really fold or make a good paper airplane. Mm-hmm. So yeah, each time they have some uh, skills and how to how to negotiate with people when they have a conflict and how to distribute pe- distribute the food without hurting their esteem. Because for those uh, program, you uh, we need to give the food to those who are in need and for those who are who have low income so we have to be cautious uh, when giving those food all right um so i think whoops where is we need to move on to the next uh topic and story that will be a the, that is also another fun uh, story called rice business plan competition So in 2014, a visiting scholar from National Taiwan University came to Purdue. He was interested in participating in Rice Business Plan competition and needed a current student on the team to present in the contest. After handing out several times, he thought I was the right person and invited me to join his business team. Since I was also an alumnus of National Taiwan University. And it would be a great opportunity and experience for me to do something new. I accepted the challenge and joined the team. The business team, uh, the Rice Business Combination, a plan combination hosted and organized by the Rice Aliens for Technology and Entrepreneurship at Rice University. This is the world's richest and largest graduate level student startup competition. The competition is designed to give collegiate entrepreneurs a real world experience to fine tune their business plans and elevate their pitches to generate funding to successfully commercialize their products. The judges are asked and uh, to rank the present, uh, presentations based on which company w- they were most likely invest in. So the goal, the goal of the rice, uh, rice business plan competition is to pro- provide the best overall educational and entrepreneurial experience of any business plan competition. In 2014, there were more than 600 teams around the world submitting their applications and only 42 teams each year will be selected for the competition. Well, what kind of competition? I'm still not really know uh, the, the detail. The business, uh, yeah, the business, uh, the business plan competition. So each team has their uh, business plan or their ideas and they try to invest it and they try to uh, make a company so they come to this competition, try to find the headquarters or try to find uh, the, the, the founders or the fundings. So, uh, so plan a new business, like plan a new startup idea, right? Yeah, yeah, the startup company. So the first day was a practice round and elevator pitch competition. The second day was the first round and feedback session and the last day was the semifinals and finals so in the first round 42 teams were divided into seven flights the first and second place teams of the first round and the highest scoring third place team overall advanced to the semifinals which means we have 15 teams total and the 15 teams are divided into three flights the first and the second place winners of the semifinals advanced to the finals. Our team called EcoBreeze is a company based on researching and commercializing in innovative, powerful, and green cooling technology for customers in the LED field. 
was selected for this competition. When the competition came, I was excited and also nervous. In the elevator pitch competition, each team took turns and gave a one minute speech in front of around 300 people in the auditorium. And some teams were very experienced with their vocal variety and with their gestures. The presenter, just two before my turn, was too nervous to, speech, to speak. So he stared up into space and sadly stepped down from the lectern after a pin drop silence of one minute. This made me more nervous now. When in my turn, I took a deep breath and then walked to the podium. And here's my elevator pitch debut. Let's see. So you have a LED business. With and you need to use power of electronic devices. It's more urgent to have a better industrial cooling solution to meet the growing market. EcoBreeze is a revolutionary cooling product which is able to replace traditional rotary fans by using high efficiency piezoelectric material, magnetic effects, and new fanless stream. With comparable to a uh, uh, performing cooling of EcoBreeze. There are three additional competitive advantages. First, lower power consumption, only three to 7% of that of rotary fans. Second, longer lifetime, more than 50,000 hours lifetimes, which is 200% as that of rotary fans. Finally, lower operating noises, because we have a fanless novel design. Doesn't it sound attractive? Yes, cool, come and join us. <laughs> still really embarrassing. I like I this idea. Have the young generation uh, invent a new business. And actually, it tests your presentation skill, right? You need yeah. to have a good uh, presentation skill to uh, talk about your business, how yeah. you attract the people. Yeah, and also I have to memorize and scream all this List contents. How can you have to, memorize right now? <laughs> yeah, so I have I have to practice and practice again, rehearse and rehearse yeah. and rehearse, and I think now I can do better <laughs> since ah. I, I know how to do it. And yeah. because at that time it's 2013, I haven't joined Toastmasters, so <laughs> that is a fun experience. Ah, cool. Are you, so our first round went very well. And we advanced to the semifinals smoothly. So hold on, sorry, sorry, I interrupt. So the the in evaluation part or the feedback part is all based on your presentation. Your presentation and also your product. Oh, and your product, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we advanced to the semifinals smoothly. In other words, I was disqualified to visit Rice University and also attractions in Houston the next day. The semifinal was in the early morning and I almost stayed up for rehearsing. In the semifinal, the judges asked a lot of tough questions and our team did not respond that well. Therefore, I did not expect to advance to the finals. At lunchtime, the host announced the finalists. Our team's name was on the board. We advanced to the finals and will be interviewed by Fortune Maxine. My tears were rolling down my cheeks, but I had to fold, uh, hold back my tears to give a professional speech in the finals in an hour. The final was in the auditorium containing more than 500 audiences and judges. I told myself that it would be the last speech and keep calm. Our team did a great job in the final presentation and the Q&A. And after the presentation, I walked out the auditorium and I cried again since I made it and all the pressures were released. 
finally, we, our team won the third place with a $7,500 US dollars cash award. What an unforgettable experience. And I really truly thanked my teammates for inviting me to the business team. And that is the story for the business plan competition. I wow. really I really glad to have that opportunity to join the team and do the presentation in front of more than 500 people. Hmm. I feel we should have this kind of competition in Taiwan. Make a young generation's uh, yes. idea have a have a, a place to represent their idea, encourage them boldly to invent a new business or new thing. Uh, we did. We have several different business plan competition. And sometimes it was small and sometimes it's big. And also in the US, they have so many uh, so many business plan competitions. And uh, also at Purdue, we have our own business plan competition. And because the they they uh, he invited me, so so I knew that oh okay, there's a largest business plan competition at Rice uh, at Rice University. So uh, the, uh, they they were all graduated from mechanical engineering at NTU. All right, so. Professor Ling, yes. Yeah. Uh, regarding the public speak, uh, speech, and you, you know, this is a funny. Um, when I introduced you in the beginning of this program, I was speaking in Mandarin Chinese in front of uh, around 30 people in the audience. And I was trying to say something about your dazzling experience. And I say, in, in Chinese, and uh, I was trying to say it's, it was dazzling, but I say showing up in Chinese. You know, I was uh, nervous. So my question for you is, public speaking ranks first among the three things that humans fear the most. How did you overcome that feeling on the spot, especially when, when your competitor in front of you was uh, staring at nowhere, and when he when he was so nervous, and uh, you know, yeah, my question. I would just say that practice and practice and practice, and also you can see that um, actually I now when I when I see this video, actually I am not satisfied with my performance. I know that I can do better, but. Uh, you just need to practice no matter how many people are in front of you. And also because at that time, I was the representative of National Taiwan University. So, and also from Taiwan. And I remember that was only one international team in that competition at that year. So I have to just hold the breath and control, the, uh, control all the auditorium. Uh, no matter I say something wrong, I just uh, correct it right away. Even though I made a mistake, that was fine. Uh, just not be shy. So I know a lot of people are shy in front of people, even though they talk to people privately. But uh, I would just say that practice. Okay, I remember. Thank you. Mm. Do you still remember the other competitor? It's really inspire you. Uh, what kind no. of business they invent? Because actually, uh, at that time, I just observed their speech, their presentation, how they did it. So, like some some people are really experienced of their gestures or their their pro, uh, their props. So, I I didn't pay more attention about their business. Uh, Do you remember because, the first first place? What's yeah, the there? first the, the first place is about I forgot actually. Oh, we can check that and and on the website. I think they still put that there. Uh, I think it's talk talking about some nano something. I forgot. Yeah, because the fun fact was that actually a lot of teams there they were trying to find 
the capital. Oh. So they, they really don't care about the 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 uh I mean the the first price or second price the uh, first place or second you want place. To find the inventor. Yeah, they just want to find uh, the sponsor. Uh -huh. But our goal there was just to win the competition. So the purpose is, was a very different. Okay. Got you. All right. So I think. Well, 10 o'clock, we need to move on to the next one. Let's talk about the Honor Society. Uh, it's called HKN. So I joined Eta Kappa Nu, HKN Beta Chapter. That is an Honor Society for students who excelled in the field of ele electrical and computer engineering at Purdue University. The HKN, or sometimes you see IEEE HKN with the arrow, a cursor, or sometimes we call it IEEE HKN, is the International Honor Society of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, sorry. The organization promotes excellence in the profession and in education through an emphasis on scholarship, character, and attitude. Membership is a lifelong designation for individuals who have distinguished themselves as students or as professionals in the fields of IEEE interest. There are 263 or more IEEE HKN chapters worldwide now. We also have one in Chang'ong University. Membership in HKN is limited to the top third of seniors or top fourth of juniors or top fifth of sophomores. And graduate students are also eligible for membership beginning in their second semester of graduate study. One day, there was an email from HKN Co Out. While well, in Midwest, we call Co Out. In Taiwan, I think we call orientation, or but we, we use Co Out a lot. We ha I had no idea about it was. Um, but my friend wanted to attend and encouraged me to do, to go. So I went to the call out and learned what HKN was and how to become a member. Before being initiated as an active member, people are called pledges and pledges need to complete all requirements before the initiation, just like a sorority or a fraternity. In beta chapter, for example, some requirements are volunteering for a community service project, attending one social event we call TGIF, and participating in launch cleaning. So after completing all requirements, pledges go to the initiation, a ceremony conducted by the officers of HKN to induct the pledges into the honor society of HKN. Since the initiation, is unique and secret in every honor society or even in sorority and fraternity. So I will not talk more about this exciting part. You need to join and you will discover. So being, after being as an active member, there are still some requirements uh, that members need to complete every semester. And such as doing at least two hours of the community service a working weekly person on duty at launch. This is our launch. This is our launch and we sell food and by, uh, only by cash. So since I did so many volunteer services in the greater Lafayette, one of my recruitment director, Hector, encouraged me to be the volunteer director. I would really like to thank him for starting my leadership development I was su successfully elected as volunteer director. And during that year, I provided many of uh, volunteer opportunities for the members to participate. Since, as I said that in 2013, I have already participated in many events. So I know how to contact those coordinators in different organization or association. So they were all inspired by my passion and did a great job on the service. Now, 
they had a good relationship with some community partners and volunteer with them regularly. And under my hard working, the HKN was nominated for the Community Engagement and Involvement Award in the Annual Student Activities and Organization Award in 2014. Besides, I learned, I've learned how to contact people and organizations efficiently and how to encourage students when they feel bored and try doing the service. Now, and also how to lead people. I feel more confident when talking to the foreign friends and also I've become more outgoing and think positively. And that's all my friends are also inspiring my enthusiasm. And now they're doing happy volunteer service together. And this leadership made me more organized and communicative. Later on, another recruit, uh, recruitment director, Nadra, encouraged me to be the president when I expressed my interest. And I felt it was a good opportunity to lead the HKN, but I was not there. I was not sure that I had the ability to do that. And she gave me many positive supports. And well, I elected, I was elected. And when I was the president in spring 2015, here is the banquet and I was here. HKN had the most members ever. We had around like more than 80 or 90 people in one semester. And still many easy students were interested in and wanted to join the society. And my goal was to make the HKM more publicity and have our members were united. I made the sandwich board and put it outside the easy building. And this one, see, where's that? This, this sandwich board. And so all the people can have a chance to come to our very own student launch and buy the delicious coffees, coffees or donuts. And in the meantime, I also try to connect members in a good relationship to give back to the EC department. And I was so happy to join the HKN and did not regret it. So I met many smart and nice people and also we supported each other. And I really want to thank to my recruiters, Hector and Nadra for bringing me bringing me to the HKN and they're just like my mentors and they helped me to and encourage me a lot in many ways so I can try new things in HKN. And I also understand more about myself and how I react to different situations, how to negotiate and how to compromise or how to solve conflicts. So I'm really honored to be the HKN member. And here you can see the fundraising. It's called Turkey Suit Fundraising, just right before the Thanksgiving break. So some professors were nominated to join this fundraising event. And if they got the most votes, then they will wear the Turkey Suit in class, teaching in class before the Thanksgiving. It was really, really fun. And also for the Honor Society, um, we have the annual, annual conference and it's called the Student Leadership Conference. So people go to the conference and learn some leadership and also meet more people from different chapters. So this is and, what happened when you are in the U of Michigan and Auburn? Okay, you know this, this is, is Michigan and Auburn? HKN you talk about? When you are in uh, a Michigan and Auburn? Yeah, I, yeah, one of the year, uh, the conference was in Ann Arbor and we went there. I think it's this one. Hey, I forgot this one is in Berkeley or the next year. Yeah, so I attended two conferences. One was in, one was held in Mich uh, Michigan and one was in California. So since our audience, Grace, uh, have a question as you. Grace, being a volunteer, do you need to pay for your own ticket? 
to oh, I have already I have already answered that question like for the NRN right oh okay yeah so I also made a poster so here is the overview of the HKN and what we what we uh, do normally and after you graduate you will get a paddle so I can hand up uh, hand on the paddle on the wall and sometimes you can see some professors who were HKN member and they were also be, uh, they were also proud of it and they will put the paddle there. I tried to put my paddle in my office, but uh, I just afraid that they broke, it, it may broke. So, 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 so I haven't done that yet. And this is one of the group picture because in each semester we have a banquet and we will take the pictures and you can see I, I was here. So that is the experience in the honor society. So Yifang, mm -hmm. um, as everyone knows that to be a president of honor society, you need to spend a lot of time. And um, oh, yeah. sometimes I'm seeing you still volunteer some other uh, association also. And my question is, did you study how to do yeah. the time management right there? Yeah, I, I, also, I also have to study right and do the research and also take um, took some course. And so like sometimes the volunteers, uh, they just did like two hours or, or only one hour and they they will help you, uh, they will pick, up, pick you up and then send you back. So you don't need to worry about the transportation. And so, and also that there's a stereotype that in the US, you always feel that you have so many times and the times in the US is always longer than the time in Taiwan, right? I really feel that because when I, when I was back to Taiwan and just feel that time is so limited. So especially um, like in, at Purdue, if you visit Chicago one day trip for one day trip, when you are back in summer, you still see that the, the sky is blue and not dark, even though it is at 8 p.m. So you feel that you did so many things in one day. Uh, so, and also that you need to dissipate your time well. Very impressive. <laughs> Hi, Ivan. Uh, I'm curious about why it's HKN instead of EK. EKN, right? Because there's, <laughs> I also had a question before. Because we have another chapter called uh, is it begins with uh, E. Uh, I forgot the rest. So, in order to distinguish these two chapters, so we use uh, H. Oh, okay. Because, because the pronunciation, you see, the pronunciation is Ada. So A like H. So that's why we have H K N. Okay, that's a trademark. Yeah. <laughs> and also the. The fun fact for joining the HOA HKN was that actually when I was there, uh, just can uh, just went there first time in my in my freshman year, my first year, and I saw that the HKN people were all native speakers or Indians, well actually no Asians, and I feel that probably those are a different kind of groups until one of my friends asked me to, to just come to their, their call out. And the funny fact was that finally he transferred to another school. And then uh, he didn't join actually, he didn't join eventually, but I just joined. Uh, in the beginning I was, I just feel that, oh, maybe, okay, I just pay the membership fee and then, and then that's it. I never thought that one day I will be the I will be the president and there will be first ever and I think probably just this one um, the president from Taiwan or in or in Asia because most of the time uh, their president or their committee well their president normally are uh, are Americans so so when I was when I when I held the first meeting, because we have a bi-weekly meeting, everybody was watching <laughs> to see how I did. Did I do well or not? 
I was also nervous, and they they also followed the Robert's book, which is the I feel I remember is that meeting book. You need to follow the procedure, and I really didn't want to follow that procedure. Like saying like, okay, how many votes should I have? And I need to ask people some uh, fixed questions. But later on, um, I just get used to it, and it was fun. And also the good thing was they all try and one were willing to listen to me when I was a president and I tried to express my opinions or my ideas. Uh, even though at that time, my English was not that good. And sometimes I need to use my gestures or sometimes I couldn't express the ideas clearly, um, but they all really want to try or try to understand. So I can see their respect. Right, oh my God, it's 10, 15. So let's move on to the next one. It's called the, um, where's that? Oh, the study abroad program. Actually, um, Purdue loves their, their students, especially native speakers to go to abroad to study, to learn their cultures. So in May semester, I had the chance to, to go to that program, to join that program in Spain. And let's see, that like one day when I walked in the hallway in our department building and the professor, Ersoy, asked me, are you interested in being TA in the study abroad course next semester, next May semester for three weeks? We will go to Spain for three weeks and what? Go to Spain. Of course, yes, absolutely. I really want to go to Spain. So in 2016, May semester, I went to Madrid and Barcelona for three weeks and it took me seven hours from Chicago to Madrid. When I got off the plane, set foot at Madrid airport and saw Spanish signs I was so excited at that moment. My expedition started out, even though I couldn't speak Spanish that well. And I almost forgot all the words except the numbers, but I can pronounce it correctly. The class was in the whole morning every day and students might do their homework in the afternoon or visit attractions around the city. As Tia in this, in this class, my job was to take care of all the students, not only on their homework, but for their safety as well. Most of the time, I roamed in the city with the students, having them must eat paella, must watch bullfight, or must visit Royal Palace of Madrid. We also found a bistro serving almost unlimited tapas. The tapas is the famous cuisine in Spain. And you ordered any kind of a drink and the bistro will give you the old tapas they made. The tapa, as I said, is one of the famous cuisine in Spain. And you may think of tapa as an appetizer. It may be cold or hot. And in fact, a tapa is a small portion of any kind of Spanish cuisine. And since it costs cheaper, Sometimes it's three or four euros, depending on the alcohol you ordered. So students went there for their dinner several times. I did not drink and I don't drink. So I ordered orange juice. When I ordered only orange juice, the server thought I wanted orange juice with alcohol. After five minutes explanation with my poor Spanish and gestures, he understood with his weird smile I was glad that I ordered my pure orange juice and he was also surprised that someone did not drink alcohol in the bistro. After three days, I went to the bistro again. The server recognized me and gave me the orange juice right away. My off screen was, oh my God, this time I just want apple juice or I just want water. I even visited the hospital in Madrid. 
since one of the students had caught off blood. I accompanied him to the hospital and we stayed there for the whole afternoon. The doctor could not investigate what was wrong. However, the student was okay finally, but I thought the reason was he drank too much. After one week, we continued to explore our next city, Barcelona, by train. And when we arrived in Barcelona, I saw a totally different city. Barcelona is the capital city of the autonomous community of Catalonia in the kingdom of Spain. People speak Spanish and Catalan. There are lots of architectures designed by Gaudi. And one of them is the Basilica of the Sagrada Familia. I was amazed and beyond my expectation when I went into the church. The dazzling color on the wall lightens the church and the red, blue, green, and yellow shine out the great brilliant behind the stained glass. It is the most stunning church I have ever seen. One of the, on the three day long weekend, five students and I decided to visit Rome at the last minute. And I made an absolutely wise decision to visit another country. I never forget, I never forget what a colossal Colosseum it is. When I went out of the subway, I was not ready yet to see the amphitheater, but the tremendous building, one of the seven wonders of the world was just right in front of me. And I couldn't wait to visit inside. And to my surprise in the era, arena, I ran into a colleague friend whom I have not met for more than 10 years after graduation. And what a small world. It reminds me that all roads lead to Rome. And so next time, if you really want to see someone, meet someone, just go to the Colosseum. The professor thought I did a really great job coordinating all the events and helped him a lot. So he asked me to do it again. The next year, the next year. Uh, so I say, well, sure, yes. Uh, because we're going to the different city in Spain, the Sevilla and Barcelona. So the next year, we participated in more cultural events. We watched their local activity. Um, okay. Anyway. It's called the human tower. And also we joined them to build the human tower. And we also learned to cook one of their famous food, tortilla. A tortilla is just Spanish potato omelet. And the fun fact was that the day after I came back to the US and I went to the supermarket and bought some ingredients to make the tortilla again. I lo really love the uh, potato omelet. So I was glad that I had the chance to visit Spain and practice my Spanish. And I also immersed in myself into the local culture. It was a great experience to learn the professional and cultural knowledge at the same time. And if you have this chance, don't miss it. So as you can see that those, this is in Sevilla and we saw the bull fight. And we, we had the bike tour in the beginning of the class in Sevilla. So those are all the students. And I haven't, rode, uh, I haven't ridden the bicycle for more, more than 10 years, but it was okay eventually. And this is in Madrid after we saw the bull fight. And this is the cooking class. We learned how to cook the cold soup and also the tortilla. And we also watched the flamenco, the show. In Barcelona, this is their exclusive activity called the Human Tower. And we also participated in the base level at the end. Uh, when they do this activity, 
it is quite silence because people have to zero in on zero on in their 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 activity because people need to uh, climb up, and it will be really dangerous if someone just dropped. Wow, that's a big oh. challenge. Uh, yeah, and this is in Rome, and also I met my friend. Uh, the 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 Colosseum is really really big, right? And it's really hard to find someone inside. This is in the Sevilla, and in that uh, in Sevilla, we all stayed in the like a host family. So they will provide the food. They will provide three meals every day, and so those are the uh, the students you can see. This is the Sagra, uh, Sagrada Familia. You can see this color. Those colors are brilliant, right? Uh, and shining. So it's really, really amazing. And actually I was stuck. I was stunned for those sceneries. So that is the story for the uh, study abroad. How, how long is it? I want to hear your amazing talent. Oh, yeah, three uh, three weeks because it, it was in May semester. Okay. So only three weeks. Mm -hmm. And actually after the second week, a uh, second year uh, in the final, when, when we were in final, the professor uh, gave me a note. And in the note, they said Dublin or uh, Prague, which means that next year, how about Prague or Dublin? And I was so excited because I haven't been to those two cities. Unfortunately, at the end, uh, due to my visa issues and also I have to graduate, so I couldn't join their third year trip. Uh -huh. How, how you join the band? I want to hear that part. I haven't heard that yet. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so let's see. Where's that? Uh... You make a, your story like a professor job. <laughs> no, I just try to write it down and uh, and then I just mess up because there's so many papers and I couldn't, I didn't clip it and, and I didn't know the order. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, I think that's fine. Let's see the the bands and orchestra. How young you start practice your music? When I was four years old, I played the piano. Oh, no wonder. So Purdue does not have a music major, but Purdue Bands and Orchestras provides an opportunity for me to continue my lifelong journey with music as a performer. I played the piano when I was four years old and I did not go to music training classes, but I had individual lessons nonstop all the time, even when I was at Purdue. When I was in college, I also play the clarinet and tenor saxophone in National Taiwan University Wind Band. That was a student organization. When I went to Purdue to pursue my PhD degree, I never thought I could join any band or orchestra someday in the US. Even though I wanted to perform at Elio Hall or Low Playhouse, Lone Center of the Performing Arts, those are the concert halls at Purdue or in the Greater Lafayette. And, uh, and also other fancy music halls. And however, dreams came true. I had a chance to join Purdue Philharmonic Orchestra in the fall 2015. They had two regular concerts each semester. And one was in the middle of the semester and the other was at the end of the semester. The first music piece I performed is The Planets by Gustav Holst and I played the Celesta. It was my debut at Low Playhouse. 
The concert was great, and I was excited about wearing a tuxedo. And it was my first time. And you see, oh, this is the tuxedo. And the second concert, I was much more excited because I was playing Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Three by Bach, and I love Baroque music. And this piece was quite challenging. They were many times using my ring finger, crossing my pinky on the right side and on, on my right hand. But I was not afraid of it since I played a lot of pieces by Bach and I know how to do it. The concert was perfect and I wish I had a video recording to catch that moment. Later, I joined Purdue Wind Ensemble and concert band. There were many fun pieces with the piano part. I also had a I also had a chance to play ragtime music that I never played before. I love each piece that the conductors chose, and sometimes the piece was easy for me, and sometimes it was really really hard. But no matter what level it was, it was always it always developed and cultivated my ensemble skills and technical skills. And here, let's see the excerpt excerpt of the ragtime. Uh, period. Hey, where is that? We cannot hear the sound, but it's okay. That's the main thing. You join the, the orchestra. You cannot hear the sound? Yeah, but it's okay. Oh, that's, the picture. that's that's so sad, but I was hide here. Well, that's fine. Uh, probably I can fix that later. So one of the amazing experience uh, for me through the Purdue Band and Orchestras were serving the blazer uh, in, in fall 2017. And I knew much more about the old American marching band. So I have never participated in a marching band and always wanted to join and see how hard it is. However, as a graduate student, I really don't have much time to, doing the, uh, to do the marching band. So the practice, they, they practice every afternoon and perform at the home yeah, football game. Okay. So being a blazer is a good competition. Hey, Eva is here. Hello, Eva, Eva is here. Eva, tell us how how much you know about Eva. You are telling hello. amazing us. No, hello. Uh, I'm in the hospital. My mom, my mom is in the hospital. I really cannot oh, okay. talk. Sorry about that. Okay, okay. okay no problem. Uh, I'm just a, yeah. I'm just okay. an audience. Just listen. Yeah. We pray for your mom. Sorry. Fine. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, thanks. So thanks. That's Bye. okay. Uh, being a blazer is a compensation. So I helped the All American Marching Band at Purdue in the football home football game, blocking the fans from uh, when they parade to the stadium, and also doing the music they play, and also setting up the equipment they need, and giving the hot dogs or water or tearing down after the game. So bla blazers just like a backup for the support of the uh, All American Marching Band. So later on, I joined the Pet Band and it's called the Black, a Gold and Black Sound. And we say GAPS for the Purdue's women's basketball team. So we play the uh, music in the women's basketball uh, game and also the volleyball game. And I play the melodica. And I also done the cheers during the game and some music as the, the marching band played. So I also realized that our women's basketball game was really good. This is the women's basketball games. And so those no, are the professor. football game. It's okay, but with this music talent, I think it's very fun, hard to find a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. 
And so those are the like a home game. So I help uh, set up the stuff. And this is in the Indy 500 with, I just had the chance to have a pictures with the tweeters. So I really would like to thank like uh, Professor, Bodoni, uh, Professor Bodoni in the Phil, uh, Purdue Philharmonic Orchestra. And I like his style of conducting and he always gives strong support. And also the Professor Gay part, which is the leader in this department. He gave me so many opportunities to show my talent. And I had a great time playing Beethoven, ooh, Beethoven a violin sonata, number five, Spring, with the food principal at the Eddie Hall, which is the biggest concert hall at Purdue. And also, um, I also thank uh, uh, Professor Naif uh, because he uh, she encouraged me to join the GAFs, the pep games, pep bands, and also Professor Fletcher. Um, he always gave me some fun part of the pieces and those are quite challenging, but I nail it. So join Purdue bands and orchestras enlightens my school life and I can continue playing music when doing my research. And I have the opportunity to play music with all the talented people together and give performances in public every semester. And I enjoy the rehearsal atmosphere and performing on stage by giving the audience a beautiful and lovely melody. Even though Purdue does not have a music department, these non-music major students still perform professionally and I'm proud of playing music with them. And I couldn't imagine how my PhD life would have been if I did not join the Purdue Bands and Orchestra. And also... Sounds like you have a wonderful life experience in a Purdue. Uh, okay, somebody else is in the screen. Uh, that's okay, we almost at the end. So I'm not waste time for that. Hey, but uh, my my screen stuck. Okay, maybe Catherine. You stop sharing. That's okay. No, I think you can kick out the Catherine. Catherine. Yeah, because Catherine are doing this uh, pictures. So if you just kick out Catherine, then I think it's fine. But now I need to stop sharing no, and sh uh, sharing that again. Okay. So let's do it uh, again. The co-host can, can do it, yeah. All right? Yeah. And here, I had a really good chance to hold the banner to parade in Dublin in St. Patrick's Day. Um, so I will really thank Professor Gelpot to give me this opportunity. So it was a nice, nice uh, picture. So in 2018, in spring break, we spent one week in Ireland and participate because they were invited to the parade in St. Patrick Day in Dublin. All right, so I think I need to move on to quickly. So the last one is, um, is the homecoming court. And every school has a homecoming week. And what is homecoming? I look up the dictionary and could not find a good translation to Chinese since in Asia, we don't have this term. And homecoming is an annual tradition in the United States. And people will come back alumni and former residents with a series of activities, such as a banquet, a football game played on the school's home football field and a parade featuring the school's marching. I think we really need to, uh, the host can kick the, kick Catherine out. I already kick her out. So is it someone else? Is Catherine is still here, right? No, I already kick her out. But I, here I can see Catherine. So I will stop sharing and then do it again. Sounds right. like a... so, okay. So, uh, so 
And also we had the parade featuring the school's marching band. So besides these activities, the school also selects homecoming court. The homecoming court is a representative group of students who are completing their final years of study at their school and who have done a lot to contribute to their school. And it is extremely honored to be selected for the, co the court and the entire student body votes for the king and queen. In spring 2016, the Purdue Student Union Board was looking for involved and enthusiastic candidates for the 2016 homecoming court. The selection of the court was based on the candidate's essay, resume, academic achievement, extracurricular activities, and community involvement. I told myself that I, was, I should give it a try in my school life. I had a strong involvement at Purdue, doing tons of volunteering services. And where is that? Uh, and also building leadership and many organizations and also receiving a lot of scholarships and awards on campus. So I started to write an essay about why I was uh, proud of being bored out. So now oh. some, I think someone hacked like a rate tie we need to. Okay, you can stop screen, that's uh, okay. We almost the end. But I, I will have a curious question. How you get a job in the National Taiwan University with so much you, talent? How, yeah, how what's thought, your style when you work? No, first I think you, you should kick out Ray Tai because Who? Ray Tai R A Y that he probably will hack again, so you can kick them out. What happened to my account? Am I causing any trouble? Yes. Huh? Oh yeah, so also oh, you did not know that, but because I saw his name like a drawing on the slides, oh. <laughs> so that's weird. But well, it doesn't uh, well, do anything that's here. <laughs> that's weird. Like there's a link. Are you no. on the YouTube? No. No. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so should I still share the screen or? This I think this is my last story. Uh, or we can stop here. That's fine. I think we. I think we just stop here and uh, and see if you have any questions. Hello, can you? Now you, uh, Shiny, you are muted. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, Lucy, uh, Sally, do you want to do our conclusion? Oh, Warren, are you here? You want to give us some conclusion? Any, anybody, if you want to talk, you can open your microphone. Now, if uh, you have any question, I just wonder, wondering how you get a job for National Taiwan University. <laughs> With so much talent and your experience, I know you know how to persuasive your presentation, you know. But how how you start, how how you decide not stay in America but go back to Taiwan, work in the oh, National uh, Taiwan University. Oh, I think um, maybe I I just uh, want to go back, and uh, also oh actually. After I graduate, I tried to apply for some teaching job, but I was not that seriously applying for it. Um, and later on, I feel that uh, it's it's uh, it's good to go back to Taiwan um, since I've been abroad for more than probably seven or eight or even eight years. So it was a good time to come back to Taiwan. your teaching style what you muted again i mean what's your teaching style my teaching style it's like i try to use the simple examples to let the students understand the difficult difficult theories and always try to use different methods to explain the same ideas 
So because some students probably can't understand in this direction, so I can use another direction to let them understand. Oh, I saw Lucia. Uh, okay, Lucy, your turn. Oh yeah, hi. Hi, Professor Lin. Thank you so much for your such inspiring speech. Uh, you you worked so hard. <laughs> I think we need to we need to kick out link. Okay, I can continue. Thank you. Uh, <sighs> Professor Lin, you work so hard to pursue your dreams, uh, manage your own life, and have the courage to seize opportunities. And this whole process is full of uh, sweats, self-discipline, continuous learning, challenge, and honors. Um, be more than just a participant in the group. Oftentimes, you uh, were promoted to a leader position. And recognized and being recognized by the public groups and the organizations, so it is a very inspiring, uh, like uh, to build the team. You serve the community and uh, make yourself. And so we we heard someone said that um, there's no no bad uh, no best uh, no best you, only a better you. So you've been doing such great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, especially I will thank uh, Shiny again and this Bon Bon team again for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences in the US. And hopefully that I can inspire someone, especially who are planning for applying for the, uh, the study in the US later on. And also someone who probably just are there, uh, they can do something else. Yeah, actually, um, I, I don't know if you might uh, have a, a, a one question, maybe not so much related to the extracurriculum activities uh, you've been um, demonstrating today. Uh, I, um, I, I was wondering- oh, Link, is, what... Link is here now, just kick, kick Link out. Yeah, Link is here, L-I-K. How did we move it? Yeah. Remove him again. He came back. Oh, yeah, he came back. Oh. Too bad we have somebody like that messing up a presentation. I'm so sorry to see That's something fine. happen like this. Oh, so uh, my question is, uh, what type of us? Um, um, what what type of a situation in your life do you think is more likely to lead to stress? Uh, because we've been seeing so many great achievements you have, and just wondering that you know maybe uh, you you might be in, even encounter any uh, any kind of uh, uh, setbacks in your study experiences. And uh, oh, okay, sure. because so far at this and point, he's back. you know. At this point of your life, you seem to have demonstrated the role model of success. Have you ever encountered any major set setbacks before, or have you practiced a set of unique skills to flip around the tough situations? And uh, if it's the latter, what are they? Are you willing to share them with us? Oh yes, I always had a lot of problems and uh, <laughs> setbacks in my life. And uh, you, but you have to think positively and you have to think about, uh, you have to figure out how to dissolve it or how to nail it. And especially that, especially people uh, like Taiwanese people in the US, uh, the goal, the final goal is the same. They want to get the degree and they want to uh, graduate soon. When I was there, actually, my another goal is to learn more about the American culture or even cultures from different countries. So I took a little bit more time to finish my study 
to get my PhD. And uh, all the time when I was there, it's really hard to find the, the, the question or the topic that I'm interested in and uh, try to graduate. So, I'm sorry, Professor. Hello. Um, can you hear me? Um, can I speak in Chinese? 